Well, good morning. Welcome to St. Elizabeth as we have a few who are here and a few who are at home and hopefully a lot at home. It is wonderful to have you with us today as we celebrate the second Sunday of Easter. Our service will be a right to service. It will begin on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer. And we will be using Eucharistic Prayer B today for our Eucharistic Prayer. So let us begin on page 355 in the middle of the page. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your name. Uh, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Together, let us say the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayers. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. In the glory of God the Father. Amen. I need to pause this just for a minute. this. Come on. The internet went down. I'm going to turn the internet off. Okay, I think we're back. If somebody's out there watching, just wave and let me know, send a wave and let me know you're back because we lost the internet and so now I'm on um, Verizon. Um, hopefully you can see me and uh, if somebody will just wave and let us know where you're at. And we'll can, huh? Okay, it's running behind, thank you. Um, well, now that we've got that glitch out of the way. All right, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. This time we'll have a reading from the Holy Scriptures. Please be seated. Our first reading is from the book of Acts. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you, according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad, and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, but he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. 
Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of, res of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Uh, we will read together Psalm 16, page, found on page 599 of your Book of Common Prayer. Page 599. Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my God above all other. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O oh God, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a God goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For all will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your Holy One see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. The word of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it, it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Our second reading is from First Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now, for a little while, you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that, though perishable, is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him, and even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy, for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. 
But Thomas, who was also called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although do the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood, <clears throat> excuse me, stood among them, although the doors, <clears throat> and said, Peace be with you. Then, Thomas, then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God. And through believing, you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. And praise to you, Lord Christ. Most gracious and heavenly Father, may we come to believe and not disbelieve. May we come with a full heart, trusting in who you are and your love for us. In uncertain times, Lord, let us continue to seek you. So let our eyes always see your hand at work about us, our ears always be ready to hear your word, our hearts to embrace it. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning. It is wonderful to see you here in the house of the Lord where we truly do worship our Lord and Savior, the risen King Jesus. And it's wonderful for you that are out there uh, watching either Facebook Live or we'll watch this later because we do welcome you because of our risen Lord Jesus. And he is where we have our hope, our trust, and our faith, and we can rest assured in the belief of him. I used this story probably about three or four years ago, maybe as longer than that, maybe five years ago. But I think it's a story that really relates to us in many different ways. And it's a story about a little boy who's five years old. And, you know, five-year-old kids sometimes are afraid of the dark. Well, that was true of this boy, Johnny. And Johnny was in the kitchen, and he was helping his mother, you know, while she was preparing supper. And she needed a can of tomato sauce. And they lived in an old house, and it had a pantry where you had to walk into and didn't have really good lighting in it. And so she asked Johnny, said, Johnny, would you go in and get me a can of, you know, tomato sauce? And Johnny looked at her, and he was just really afraid, and he didn't want to go in. He goes, it's dark in there. I'm afraid. And she said, well, please, just go in and get it. And then next thing you know, he's, no, 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 I'm afraid of the dark. And she looked at him in a very sincere heart and just looked at him and said, you can go in there. Jesus will be with you. You do not need to be afraid. So he goes to the door again of the pantry, and he's hesitant. And then something came to his mind. And he said, Jesus, if you're in there, would you hand me a can of tomato sauce? It's interesting because I think sometimes we are afraid also. We're afraid to go to places that we're not certain about. We're afraid to step out because of, you know, we look at the things that surround us. And we are afraid because sometimes we're very pessimistic about what's going to happen or what can happen. You know, I, I heard some time ago, a, a pessimist is somebody who looks at the land of milk and honey, and all that they see are calories and cholesterol. So I hope you're not like that. Let us look at what God has for us. The, today, when we read about Thomas, and it really is more about faith, because really what happens is, Jesus, this is, we have to look at the time frame in this, because it is the day of the resurrection, Thomas is not with him, I can understand that, I mean, on Friday they had crucified Jesus, he's in a town where there's millions of people because they've come to celebrate the Passover, he's seen what's happened, and they live in fear because they were disciples of Jesus, 
They're disciples of Jesus and they know that the Romans are going to be after them. The Jewish leaders are going to be after them. And so they're probably just, you know, afraid of what's happened. They're still in the feast of the unleavened bread and they need to stay there. And what happens? Thomas is probably just morning. Thomas is trying to find a place to hang out. Thomas is just looking to try and figure out what's happened over these last three days. The disciples themselves were in the upper room again. They were gathered together. And that evening, Jesus appeared to them. And they, too, were afraid. I mean, here they are. They're in a locked room. They're in the upper room. They're gathered together. And Jesus appears to them. Now, they had been to the tomb earlier. They had run down to the tomb. Peter and John had run down to the tomb. They looked into it. The, the ladies had been down there, Mary Magdalene and Mary. And they'd seen the tomb was empty and they wondered. And they knew that the guards that were there had been bribed by the council to say that they had come that night and stole his body and hid it. And so what we find is that they're afraid. They're afraid of what might happen to them. But there stands Jesus in front of them. And as we read the gospel today, it said that they were afraid and then Jesus says something to them. Peace be with you. Now, that's not peace like peace, man. That's the peace of God. In other words, you, there is no... Nothing that stands in enmity between you and God. You're reconciled to God. And he says, peace to you. And they're astonished. They're amazed. They're in wonderment. And then he shows them his hand. And he shows them the pierced side. And all of a sudden they recognize who he is and the joy that enters into their heart. And again, he says, peace to you. It's that awareness. It's that first awareness of who Jesus really is, that he did come back from the grave, that he did resurrect, that he was the one who is truly the Messiah. That's the beauty of this. Because it is just like us in times of uncertainty in which they were. And they wondered about Jesus. And Jesus appears to him just like he comes to us. In our times of uncertainty we can feel. And he said, he breathed on him. He said, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. And he breathed the Holy Spirit into them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. And when we receive Christ and we receive the Holy Spirit in us, it gives us the power of God to believe and to follow. In times of uncertainty... Things hadn't changed from that morning and how they were feeling until they saw Jesus. And it was when he came in and showed himself that they could finally believe and have peace. That fear that was in their hearts was being relieved because what had happened was true. As they go through... Feast of Unleavened Bread as they're staying in Jerusalem. They find Thomas and maybe Thomas reconnects with them. And they keep telling him, the Lord's alive, the Lord's alive. And I can understand Thomas's pessimism. Is he really alive? Or are you just saying that? Are you just trying to keep this thing going? Or is he really alive? And so he says something, he says, unless I see and put my finger in his hand, unless I put my hand in his side, then I'm not going to believe. Thomas is with them a week later. They're back in the upper room. They're gathering together and Jesus appears again. Now, Jesus is very sympathetic. Jesus, being the Son of God and knowing that he is God, knows what Thomas had said. And he actually offers Thomas. Says, Thomas, go ahead, put your finger in my hand. Put your hand in my side. But nowhere does it say that Thomas did it. Because, see, he knew that Jesus knew what he had said. And only God would know what he said. And he makes one of the greatest confessions. My Lord and my God. You see, Thomas went from that uncertainty to a belief. And Jesus actually said, and it says in here, that he says, do not disbelieve, 
but begin believing. The Greek word means begin to believe, Thomas. Begin to believe. And that's what we have to do. It's continually to believe in Jesus. Continually to follow him. Continually to share the, wor the world with who he is. I look at what we're going through during these times and the same uncertain times and the same trials that the disciples were going through while they were different are really no different than what we're going through today. We have this uncertainty. We don't know what's going on. We don't know how it's going to end. But the one thing we do know is that Jesus is there with us. And we can have faith in him to carry us through. We can have faith in him to carry us to the end. The uncertainties that we face just as the uncertainties that the disciples faced at that time. He came and he said, peace be with you. And that's what he's saying to us today. Peace be with you. Don't disbelieve, but begin believing. Believing in him. Believing in how he's handling this. Believe in how he's holding us. And believing how he cares for us. It requires us to have faith. The epistle that we read from Peter where it says that you love him even though you haven't seen him. And we walk by faith and not by sight. Hebrews 11 says hope is the evidence of things not seen. And our hope and our belief is we haven't seen Jesus, but we experience His Holy Spirit. So I want to encourage you today. I want to leave you with that thought. Just as little Johnny said, Jesus, Jesus, if you're in there, hand me a can of tomato sauce. Will you reach out your hand to Jesus? Say, Jesus, take me by my hand and hand me that faith that I need to carry me through this time. Reach out. Give me that peace. And when we open our hearts like that, the peace that passes all understanding will be with us and carry us through these times. I don't know where your faith is at today. I don't know how deep it is. But I know that when we open our hearts to Jesus, our faith will deepen. Our faith will grow. And we will experience the peace of God which passes all understanding in our hearts and our minds because of what he did for us on the cross. Don't disbelieve, but begin believing deeper and deeper and allow him to lead you in faith and trust by the power of his Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed found on page 300 and I will find it 58 in your book of common prayer. We believe in one God the Father the Almighty maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only Son of God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit. He became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We will continue with the prayers of the people. Please nail, if you are able, for the prayers of the people. Form 3, found on page 387 in the Book of Common Prayer. Page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church, that, that we, we all, all may be one. one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you, that your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, exceptionally our, our um, presiding bishop Michael, our bishop Gregory, our priest Dave, and our deacon Laurie, that, that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, that there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake, that, that our, our works, works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that, that they, they may, may be delivered, delivered from their distress. Yes. Give to the departed eternal rest, that light, light perpetual shine, shine upon them. them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hardwood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God, using the words on page 360 in your Book of Common Prayer. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Hear the word of God, who all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this is a true saying, worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And if anyone sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And now let us stand for the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you.